Marabu Shindelebuska. Mala Brozendelebuska. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Brethren, welcome to today's service in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Welcome and God bless you. As you share, God bless you. As you join us wherever you are, join us at Beautiful Gate Assembly. Beautiful Gate Assembly is on book, uh, Facebook. Join us, join us, and join us on YouTube, Omega Force 1 and Omega Force 2. And God will bless you. In the name of Jesus, Cat of Nazareth, today we present to you the reason why Jesus came to this world, the reason why he came to rescue us from the powers of darkness, from the grip of Satan and his agents of darkness. And so today we present to you Jesus made us champions part one. Jesus made us champions part one. Brother, sister, you are a champion. You are not just an ordinary loser. You are a champion. Jesus was born for us to become champions. He was born for us to be set free. He came and gave us power so that we'll be able to overcome our enemy and our adversary, who is the devil himself. He came with the power. Just recently, a group of people celebrated what they call Easter. I call it the Passover time. I call it the day of power. Easter is not actually for Christians. For Jesus himself came and met Easter. Came and met Easter. And a lot of things. It's a sacred day for the Jewish people. It's a sacred day for the Jewish people. And those who believe in what they were doing. And so we celebrate our Passover as well. At the same time, they just made everything to collide together for us to be confused. But we know the difference. We know the difference, and I believe that you know the difference, that Easter is not really for the people of God. It is a feast that we are observed by the Jewish people for whatever purpose that they want to. That is not where I'm going to this time. But I'm here to, to tell you why he came, to tell you why he went to the cross to die, to tell you why God gave his only begotten son that whosoever that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And I will add here, that person will have power to overcome. That person will have power to subdue Satan and his agents of darkness. That person will have power over death and hell. That person will become a champion. And for this purpose, we are all champions. In as much as you are a child of God, in as much as you are a believer, you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, it shall be so with you. You shall become a champion. He came to give us the mantle of, of being a champion, the mantle of a winner, the mantle of an overcomer. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, I read, And he said, Jesus said unto his disciples, He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. When the Father had put in his own power, in his own power, but you have to receive the power first, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and in Nigeria, and in Africa, and in Europe, and in America, and in Asia, and in India, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Until you are endued with power, there is nothing you can do. Even if you try to do, you may try to do, but you will be struggling. And so he came to give us that power. 
He said we have to wait until we are endued with power, until we are, we are fortified with his power. And he came on the day of Pentecost to give us that glorious power. The power that when you activate it, when you use it, the devil will bow. Satan will bow. Circumstances will bow. That is why Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. He did not go there just for a celebration. He did not just go there just because he wanted to be there. He wanted to make a show. Yes, he made a show of the devil and the agents of darkness for you and I to be made champions because he has gone to be with his father to prepare a place for us. Therefore, he gave us the mantle of a champion, the mantle of an overcomer, the mantle of of grace, the mantle of glorious light. And therefore, darkness cannot stand before us. Sickness cannot stand before us. We are winners. We are champions. We are overcomers. That is why he went to the cross. Praise the Lord. The reason why he went to the cross is for us to receive that power. He pretended to be defeated on the cross so that they will now think that it is over. But by that pretext that he made there, the enemy thought that they have defeated him. They thought they have defeated the world. They didn't know by that mistake they have just duplicated millions and millions of Christ, Christ, those who have the spirit of Christ, Christ's power. And so, on the day that he, he, he announced to the world that it is finished, there was power that was released to the earth, to millions and millions and trillions of people who believe in him. And he said, greater works than this shall you do. Because what he did was tremendous. Though some people are contesting it, are contending with what he did, that he didn't do so. But he did exactly what was written in the scripture. He overcame death and hell. He went to hate to dispossess Satan of the, the, the key of life and death. And he handed it over to us. Brother, I am a champion and you are a champion. Brother, we have been made champions. We have been, we have been crowned champions by Christ himself. And that is the purpose of his death and burial and resurrection. He made an open show of all these things for you to grasp it, for you to use that power to overcome your situation, to overcome your circumstances. Let me tell you, in case you don't know what Easter means, Easter is a celebration of the of, of, of the hiddens. And in that period, a lot of things happen. They capture men to destroy men. That immediately after Easter, they begin to shed blood. Now we are one week after Easter. <laughs> oh, la Shantaraboska. I am speaking to champions and I don't know who you are. But the Lord who knows who champions are. And I am one of them. And I am one of the champions made, crowned by Christ himself. On the day that he said it is finished. <laughs> hey, he congratulated the earth and congratulated himself that he has made it. It is finished. Death has been defeated. Hell has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. So, he gave up the ghost and gave up life. Gave up life and gave us life. <laughs> oh, brother, sister, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking from the realm of the supernatural, that there is somebody under the sound of my voice uh, that has received that power now to overcome to overcome his situation, overcome his circumstances. Oh, in the book of Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12, and I'm going to read from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Marabo Shendrebo, follow me, follow me, follow me. Let me just give you an instance of what happened. Even during, even before, even after Easter. The Bible says in Acts of, of the Apostles chapter 12, verse 1. 
And about that time, that particular period of Easter, only Shandaraba, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Herod and his agents of darkness, the leaders of the world, on or before Easter, they always stretch out their hands to capture the Christians, to capture men and women who cannot control themselves. The Bible says that on that moment, at that moment, the man called Herod stretched his hands to vex, to annoy the church. And he killed James before Easter. Brother, you are one of the survivors of the sacrifice that we that we are made before Easter. You are one of the survivors. One week after Easter, you are still alive. Oh, you are a champion, brother. I'm a champion. One week after Easter, you are still alive. Uh, but James was killed on that day. Before Easter, James was killed. Uh, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. One of the sacrifices was made with the, with, with, with the blood of a child of God. James, the brother of John, was killed. And because he saw that it pleased the church, it pleased the Jews, it pleased the psychophants, it pleased those who claim to be Christians but are not Christians, it pleased politicians, it pleased those who are in one court or the other and still go to church. It pleased them. It pleased those who are saying that they are atheists. It pleased those who are part of the persecutors of the church. Because he saw it pleased them, he went ahead to arrest Peter, the one that Jesus called the rock upon which he will build his church. He went and stretched his hand towards Peter. Ah! A man that is already marked a man that is already carrying the seed of God in him. This man stretched his hand to arrest Peter. And you know what? When he arrested Peter, verse 3, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Now Jews are those people who were to celebrate Easter. And who are still celebrating Easter. Many of you have joined forces with them. To stretch your hands against the anointed. To stretch your hands against the people of God. But let me assure you that you will not go far. You will not go far. For if God be for us, nobody can be against us. Oh, we are all champions already. And Peter was a champion. And this man stretched his hand to take Peter. To take a champion. Herod, he stretched his hand to arrest the champion. <laughs> oh, La Shandaraba. There is going to be a shaking. There is going to be trouble in the prison of darkness. There is going to be trouble in the camp of the enemy. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord is taking over your battle from this moment. The Lord is taking over your battle because they stretch their hands towards you. To vex you, to get you angry, to annoy you. The Lord <laughs> is going to start a kind of an earthquake that will shake and swallow many. Ah, they stretch their hands. Oh, Herod and his men stretched their hands and they captured Peter. They captured Peter. Then we are the days of the unliving bread. Then we are the days of Passover. You know, the days of Passover are the days of the unliving bread. The day of sacrifice. The day of fasting. Here and there. Muslims are fasting. Christians are fasting. These ones are fasting. So it's a day of unliving bread. The day of abstentions. You will not eat anything that had blood. You will not eat flesh. You will not eat meat. You will not eat that. That was the time. The time that people were hungry. That is the time of power. The time of fasting is the time of power. And they stretch their hands. 
They stretch their hands against against the anointed, against the man who has the, 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 the fire of God in his bone. And that Peter did not worry himself. He knew who he was. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I am a champion. And Peter said, I know who I am. I am a champion. My God will not just keep quiet and allow the enemy to take my life and allow the enemy to terminate my life, even though they have killed James, but I know I am a champion. Maybe James was not a champion, but I am a champion. Brother, you are a champion. What killed your father will not kill you. What destroyed your friend will not destroy you. The same sickness they diagnosed that killed many, even if they, they diagnose you with that kind of sickness, it will not kill me. It will not kill you. It will not kill you. For I have in me the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus Christ is the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood of a champion, the greater champion is in me, flowing in me, flowing in your veins. Therefore, you are an overcomer. No manipulation, no sickness, no disease will be able to overcome the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right where you are, whatsoever evil, whatsoever sickness or disease that is flowing in your vein, I curse it with the blood of Jesus. I curse that sickness with the blood of Jesus. I curse that sickness with the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they stretched their hands against Peter. Because that was the time of fasting. That was the time of quietness. That was the time of unliving bread. That was the time that everybody, both Dick and Harry, was fasting, waiting for power, waiting, you know, to play their own religious rituals or the other. But on the side of Peter, he knew that something had already happened on the cross of Calvary. On behalf of him and his team, on behalf of him and his family, he remembered the day that Jesus looked at him and said, Thou art Peter, the rock upon which the church will be built. And so, in verse 4, <laughs> and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions. A quaternion is a sizable squad of soldiers to keep him intending with an intention that after Easter, <laughs> after Easter, Oh, on our own case, we say after Passover. After Passover. You know, the blood of goats, the blood of lambs, we are used to sprinkle on the lintels of every child of God during the Passover in Egypt. During the show of power in Egypt. And the Lord gave an instruction to the people of God and said each family must kill a lamb and then use the blood on the lintel to mark their lintel so that by the time the angel of death will be passing, you will see the blood and it will pass over them. <laughs> by the day of that passage of the angel of death, a lot of things happened that day. And that was the day they decided <laughs> to let the people of God go. Because every firstborn was brought down by the angel of death in the land of Egypt. And then it dawned on them that there is a greater power, a greater force that exists that they never knew anything about. Hallelujah. You know what happened? Check it out here. Verse 4 of Acts of the Apostles. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and assigned four quartalions of soldiers to guard him. Intending that after Easter, <laughs> one week after Easter, you are still alive. You don't know the demons that are signed against you. 
But God is there to fight your battle. God is there to fight my battle. Ah, uh, you may not know the quaternions of demons, soldiers of Satan that are assigned against humanity. But God is for me. And if God be for us, Emmanuel, <laughs> uh, no man can be against me. No assigned soldier of the devil can come near my dwelling place. For I carry me. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The King of Kings is dwelling in me. Dwelling in my house. And so nobody can arrest me. Nobody can touch me. Nobody can do anything to me. Because I am a child of grace. I am a child of power. I am a champion. I'm talking to a champion today. And in verse 5, the Bible said something. Hey. Peter, Peter, therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God, of believers unto God for him. People prayed. People were praying. Christians were praying. Believers were praying for Peter's case because they knew that this man called Herod and his team that they are wicked. They are evil. The same Herod. The same Herod. Remember? The same Herod that when Jesus was born. <laughs> yeah, when Jesus was born, that same Herod was there. And the, the three wise men reported to him that a superior king has been born. And then he began to kill everybody. He began to kill everybody that was born before Christ was born. Within that period of the birth of Christ. Two years before and two years after. Can you imagine? But because God was with Joseph and the family... And God asked Joseph, take him down to Egypt. This Herod, this Herod, you know, this Herod is part of the Jews, the king of the Jews. And the Egypt was the safe corridor. Egypt was then the whole of Africa. It's the safe corridor for Jesus to be saved. And he said, take him to Africa. Take him to Egypt. Egypt. When you hear Egypt in the Bible, it means the, the whole of Africa. The whole of Africa. From river Euphrates, river Mesopotamia, to river Nile, to river Niger, to all those, all those people, all those places where they call Middle East now. They are all called Egypt by then. And he said, cross him over to Egypt. Even Jesus went to Egypt to be saved. But do you know what baffles me, brother? Nowadays, people come from Egypt to other places where there is no savior. There is no safety. They run from Africa to where there is no safety. And when they get there, what they see will just be the next story to appear in the daily times or to appear in BBC. And when you hear the news, you will know that you have made a mistake. I don't know who I'm talking to, but know that Africa is a place set aside for God to manifest his power. Are you in Africa today? Whether it's called Egypt. Whether it's called Nigeria. I know the devil is still hovering around those areas. But the reason of politicians. Trying to discourage you. Trying to make you to jackpot. But remain there. God will come there. To set you free. If you can believe. If you can trust on him. If you can believe, you are already a champion. You are already 
fortified for the moment, for the battle ahead. For there is a battle ahead. There is a battle ahead. Hallelujah. There is what? A battle ahead. There is a battle ahead. But that battle you will win. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 